I'm going to continue this series uh, today. Uh, are y'all having fun with this? Yeah. Man, it's challenging though, isn't it? How many of you guys have been challenged since we started this series? Like, when I leave here, the first thing that happens to me is whatever I talk about. Like, I have to face to face with with what I've been seeing. And so today, we're just going to stomp it, right? We're going to go further, deeper, and faster. Because I think we've just been in in the little easy stuff so far. Is that okay? You guys are like... What? Love your neighbor? Uh, Jesus was weird. And he was weird. Here, here's what's so weird. This is the way Jesus was described. This is in Matthew uh, 22, 15. And, and these are the Pharisees describing him. It says, teacher, we know... Or this is in verse 16, actually, Matthew 22, 16. It says, uh, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully. Listen to this, though. This is what makes Jesus so weird. This is the way he was described. And you are weird. No, it doesn't say that. It says, And you do not care about anyone's opinion." For you are not swayed by appearances. That's pretty weird, isn't it? And I started thinking about that thing. I heard this guy once, man. He was so awesome. He says, I thought about that thing. Then I thought about that thing some more. (laughs) So I did that. Like, I thought about that. And then I thought about that some more. And that's been driving me crazy for a week now. Have y'all ever read that? Like, I know that verse has been in my Bible the whole time I've had it. Isn't it amazing how sometimes you just see things for the first time? Or maybe you just see things like, and it just hits you, and maybe that's not coincidence at all. But maybe that's like the way God speaks to you. I was kind of whining to God how he doesn't talk to me anymore. And then he started talking to me again. And now he won't stop talking to me. (laughs) <laughs> Funny how that happens. And I don't think it was the talking part. I think it was, hey, dummy, you haven't been listening. So as I read that, I thought, you know, that's pretty weird, but why? Why was Jesus like that? And what I came to was that Jesus knew who he was. He didn't have identity issues. Jesus knew exactly who he was. So he didn't have to listen to the opinions of others about who he was or who he might be because everybody had an idea of who Jesus was or who he might be, right? Oh, some say you're this, some say you're that, right? Remember these talks he had with his friends? And... And the thing was, Jesus knew exactly who he was, so he didn't have to listen to the opinions of others. He didn't have to to change who he was to fit what everybody thought he should be, right? This This is what was so weird about Jesus, is that he walked in this confidence, but at the same time, he wasn't arrogant. That's amazing to me how you can do that. It's called meekness. He was meek. And, and, and then it says that he wasn't swayed by appearances. Like he didn't give preference because of the way people looked. I love that. They asked me if I wanted to tone it down. On them. T- I said, no, thank you. Man, your kids are having fun. I want you to know that. And if it bothers you guys, man, just don't worry about it. It's all right. Just one big happy family. It really doesn't matter, okay? I love it. So I started thinking about myself. And I started thinking about humanity. And I started thinking about our problems of why we are the way we are. 
And what I figured out and what I came to, and maybe God said it or maybe not. But the, the problem we have is we don't know who we are and we don't know how to be loved. See, I think everything that's driving our world today is this desire to be loved. I think everybody's the basic human need, like if you truly, and I mean with everything in you, if you truly felt and believed that you were loved, that would be enough. It, it would. But because we don't feel loved, it's not enough. We always need more, always striving for more, we always want more. We're in this competition to get more, to win, to see who comes out on top. I was watching uh, something, I was flipping channels. I flip channels, man, I, my attention spans about 45 seconds. I mean, I, 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 I just drive everybody in the house crazy. If I feel like I know where the plot's going, we're on to something else. Well, you're like, you gotta, you gotta hold me in there. And so as I'm flipping through, I hear this, I don't know what they are, uh, shrink type person, counselor type, life coach, that's acceptable nowadays, life coach. And he's saying that your problem is that you have to love yourself first before you can love other people. And I was like, well, that sounds, sounds good. But the more I thought about that, that's just totally untrue. How many of you guys have heard that? I hear that a lot in culture now. Well, you've got to learn to love yourself. That's your problem. You need to learn to love yourself. I, I'll be honest. I don't think we have a problem with that. <laughs> just say it, man. I don't think that's our problem. I'm pretty sure that I have nearly the exact opposite problem. And if you'll get real, you probably do too. Like, I think I may love myself too much. We spend our whole lives trying to love ourselves because we honestly don't trust that anybody else will do a sufficient job for us. Think about that. We don't believe that anyone can ever love us like we deserve to be loved, right? I think that's why we do the things we do. I think that's why we buy the stuff we buy. I think that's why we we pursue the lifestyles we pursue because our attitude is this. If you're not going to love me the way I need to be loved, then I'll just do it myself. Today's my birthday. I'm of legal drinking age today. <laughs> Finally. No. And the way this works is if nobody else is going to love you, you just got to go buy yourself something. Right? <laughs> That's the way we love ourselves. We, we're like, man, these people around me just ain't getting the job done. So I've got to take care of it myself because we've said in our minds, or it may be not consciously, but maybe subconsciously or unconsciously, however it works for you, you've said this, you've said they're not getting the job done, so I need to do it. The problem is, is that everybody feels that way. So we enter this I world. I saw the new iPhone came out in, in this week and I was like, you know, Apple, they're, man, they're marketing just geniuses. And this one little letter put in front of all of their stuff makes it so cool. Right? I mean, it just looks cool and feels cool. Like when I have one, I am cool. I know that's hard for some of you to believe, but in my mind, I am cool. But is it because we live in an I world? 
where basically everything really is about me. And so we connect so strongly with this little device, the iPhone, the iWatch, the iPad, the iPod, the i-whatever, right? We connect with it because I deserve this. This is going to make me feel loved. And so we have all of these things in our lives, man, that make us feel like I'm loving myself. But it doesn't ever satisfy, does it? Can you ever love yourself enough to be satisfied? Some of you guys are a lot older than me. A lot. <laughs> a lot older. And I was wondering, is there ever a time where you can love yourself enough where it satisfies. Because I can tell all you guys that are younger than me, it's not at 45. You can never love yourself enough. So how does it all work? How does it all work? How can I be satisfied in life? That's the question, I think. I think that's the question that everybody has, and that's the question that we're driven to by our actions, whether we consciously believe that or say that or not, but, but our passions and our desires and our goals and our hopes and our dreams and, and our, our actions and culture and the way we, we live says that that is the goal, that I am going to achieve loving myself and that's going to give me that thing, that peace, that that thing that it in life that everybody's seeking, right? But we bought into the lie. See, it's, a, it's elusive. You can never catch it. And so what we do is we spend our whole lives pursuing something that can never be caught. Why? Because we weren't created to love ourselves. This is not the way we were created. It's not, in our, it's not in our being. It's not in our DNA. It is not possible to have a fulfilled life by loving yourself. So how does life work? Well, God says in the Old Testament, He says, here are my laws, and they are your life. If you're looking at what will give you life, man, and these were Neanderthals, okay? These were cave people. You have to understand that they, they weren't modern man. God's given his laws about, man, you really need to bathe. You know, don't eat this. Like, don't eat that shrimp that you pulled out a week ago. God's given them these laws because, well, he wants humanity to survive, first of all. But he says, within my laws, which is his will, is life. And I want life for you. But inevitably, man turns this into self-love, and self-love says, wow, God's given us a rule list, so then we get in a competition about who can do the rules better than everybody else, right? So then we develop a religion. So 2,000 years, 3,000 years go by, and people are trying to do these rules better than everybody else. And God's laws, God's will that He meant for life becomes just another way of self-love. So God says, it's time for the world and mankind to be reconciled to me. And at just the right time, I love the way Paul writes this, at just the right time, God sends His Messiah, His Savior, His Redeemer, to reconcile the world to God. To end the curse. To break the curse. To fulfill all that had been written in the Old Testament. He sends His Son, the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior. And when Jesus comes, He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says it like John, man, when it starts out, he says the light came into the world and that light, that, life gives, that light gives life 
to men. And he was talking about himself. So one day Jesus is being questioned about God's laws by the religious people. First, the Sadducees questioned him about resurrection. And he trips them out and shuts them up. The Sadducees, they didn't believe in resurrection, the resurrection of the dead. And Jesus Jesus, uh, answers them. And so the Pharisees laugh at the Sadducees and say, oh man, those guys are idiots. Watch us, we're going to get him. So they go to him and they say, what's the greatest commandment? What's the greatest commandment? Now, you've got to read between the lines here. What's the question? What is the most important thing that gives life? Right? Because if I'm a a Jew and I'm living in, in that time, man, I know that God's commandments are life, right? That, in, that God gives His will and His will is life. So as the question's being asked, it's asked like, what is the most important thing to have life? Would we agree that that's the question being presented? What are the most important commandments? And Jesus said, to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, and strength. With your whole being, to love God. And the second is like it to love your neighbor as yourself all of the law and all of the prophets hang on these two commandments okay so here's where you have to say which one of those says love yourself where in any of god's laws does it say love yourself Where does it say, if you love yourself, you will have life? You see, it's not there. It's not there. But we bought into the illusion that we can love ourselves into life. But when it comes down to it, the only way to have life is to love God and to love those around me. And as I start to process this, I think, that's weird. That is weird. In our world today, to not love yourself is weird. To love God and to love others? How strange. But that's because we believe the lie. And right now in your mind, you're arguing with me. How many of you guys are arguing with me in your mind? It's just it, like in our minds, we start going, no, that's not right. That can't be. That's not right. Love God and love others without loving yourself is impossible. But see, God knows of something about us that we don't know about ourselves. It's that if we love others. And I mean truly love others. Like Jesus said this, no greater love has anybody than to lay down his life for his friend. So love is essentially sacrifice. God so loved the world that he gave his son Messiah. He gave his life, right? So essentially love is sacrifice. And I start to look at my own life, man, and I'll confess to you, I'm pretty self-centered. Now, I've come a long ways. But true, is that not a cop-out? Because aren't we all just pretty much more self-centered than not? Do we not worry and care more about ourselves than even those the very closest to us? Like maybe even our own wives? our own husbands, our own kids. Not to mention our neighbor. Because if I can't love my wife and my kids more than myself, then how am I going to love my neighbor that way? And so we spend our lives loving ourselves, but that's not the way life works, and that's why we can never be satisfied. That's why we're always pursuing. 
Jesus was completely comfortable because he loved God and he loved others. He, he didn't spend and expend the energy that it takes to love himself. Do you know what it takes to love yourself? I'm tough to love. It takes a lot. And a lot of you guys are like, man, I don't even know what you're talking about. You're just rambling. Well, isn't our attitude somewhere deep inside in places we don't like to talk about at church, right? Isn't our attitude somewhere deep inside like, if they're not going to treat me the way I deserve to be treated, I'll treat myself to it, even with our wives, our husbands. If our kids won't respect us the way we deserve to be respected, then we forget them. We're going to do whatever to fill that gap, right? I know this is our attitude, and how do I know this is our attitude? All right, buckle your seatbelt. You're not going to like this one at all. The reason I know that we love ourselves more than we love other people is that Sunday after Sunday, week after week, I see all of you guys in here. And I see the same couple of people in every one of our kids' classes. That don't mean you don't like kids. But some of you guys will say, I don't like kids. I mean, it's okay. Jesus didn't like nails. You don't have to like it. Love is sacrifice. But I'll tell you this. The reason it's the same couple of people that do all of this is because they've discovered something. When that is done in earnest, like through a passion, through I'm going to choose to love these kids. I'm going to choose to do this ministry. I'm going to choose to love this undesirable person. I'm going to choose to meet this person's need. When they make that choice, what they discover is that life is fulfilling. It can be achieved. The thing we're after. And week after week, people sit in here and listen to me ramble. And they're like, man, that was, that was all right. I see this and I see that, man. That's challenging, whatever. But at the same time, you leave here and go, man, I'm really still not, you know, satisfied. And it's because you received. See, it only works when you give. It's weird. It's weird to be giving. It's weird to be generous. It's weird to deny yourself and your likes and your wants and your comfort. It's weird to make yourself, to put yourself out for somebody else. That is weird. I deserve to be loved. But see, what you don't get is you are. You are, you are treasured. You are valued more than you can ever know or imagine. But you can't experience it until you give it. You cannot experience love until you give love. I tell, tell you guys this all the time. It's, it's money. Money is green paper. It does you no good to stockpile it. Money only has value when. When it's given. A dollar has no value until something is exchanged for it, until you give it. You can stockpile all of it you want and all you'll have is smelly, stinky, dirty money. It does you no good. And when you die, you can't take it with you. And for some reason, we think, wow, man, money is security. No, 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 no. Love is security. And you have all of it you could ever want, need, or imagine. You are loved. But you won't realize it 
until you give it away. How many of you big, tough guys in here? I'll see you. How many of you cried a little bit when your kid was born? Dude, <laughs> You didn't even know what love was till that happened, right? You thought, man, I love my wife, that's cool. <laughs> that kid was born and you're like, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> and you would lay down your life for that kid. You would take their hurts and their pains, you would make their lives pain-free and perfect if it was possible, wouldn't you? See, we know what love is and we know we experience that when we give it. But when that switch turns and we start trying to love ourselves more, even that kid that we love so much can't satisfy us when we get that self-consumed. But that's the world we live in. And see, what I've decided for me is that I want to live different. What I've decided for me is that I want to I want to love others. I want to love God because in the few times in my life that I've done that, I've experienced love. And it's not until we do that till then we know, wow, God loves me and it's enough. God loves us, and it's enough. Do you get that? I mean, right now, a lot of you guys are like, you're, you're sitting in your head going, I hear what you're saying, but no. No, it's not enough. I'm just telling you what the Bible says is true. And I can testify to that truth. Because I've done it. Not all the time, man. I wish I would. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm, I'm wicked. But man, when I do it, it's, it's right. God's word is right. It's truth. And I want for you what I've experienced. And so what I'm saying is that we should just get weird, man. We should just get weird and we should deny ourselves and our comforts and we should care more about loving others than loving ourselves. That's what I really believe. I believe that if we do that, we will discover life is good. I want you guys to stand up with me. I want to pray for you.